Welcome back, John Fedro with mobilehomeinvesting.net. And in this important video, we're gonna talk about the mobile home price sweet spot when you are reselling a mobile home via payments inside of a park. Uh, this is to maximize profit and be ethical. I get emails from people that say, you know, John, I want to sell on payments. I want to be able to charge, you know, the most amount that I possibly can. And I got someone to agree to, you know, this super high price. And I don't want you being delusional to what you can get. And so over the 20 years I've been investing, I want to show you, uh, again, the price sweet spot to maximize profits ethically when you're selling a mobile home for payments inside of a park or maybe on your own private land, you're keeping the land and you're just selling the home on payments, but that home is personal property. Let's first talk about some mobile home truths. Uh, and some mobile home truths Here are some mobile home truths when we're selling mobile homes on payments. Taking payments gets you the highest sales price when you're selling. If you take payments, you will get a higher sales price than just selling for cash. Pretty obvious, I think. And you're taking your money over, you know, five, 10 years or more. Now it's not always possible or desirable for you to sell the home. If you're an investor, you're selling it on payments. That's not always possible or desirable. The larger the down payment that you collect, the lower default. If you take 50% of the money, the total price of the home, and you take the rest on payments, that's a lot lower chances of defaulting from the buyer. Uh, the, the larger the down, the lower the sales price. People that have 50% to put down, they know that their money, however much it is, is valuable. All that cash is valuable, and they don't wanna pay that super high price. They want a better price because they're giving you so much cash. Uh, and then, Let's assume that the buyer knows the price, the payments, the interest, the fees, the taxes, the insurance, etc. This whole video is about you know setting this the, 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 the buyer up for success. So disclosing everything, and you know, I think that kind of goes without saying, but I want to say it that we want to be ethical and the uh, buyer should know exactly what they are paying for. Now, since this wants to roll over, let's go ahead and move along to the juicy part. All right, now let's assume this for your specific deal. Uh, this will change, I'm gonna show you just a little bit, but let's just pretend that you wanna go ahead and receive uh, the most amount of profit you can for an investment home. You've bought a mobile home investment, it's in a park, you've maybe cleaned it up, fixed it up, you wanna resell it, and you wanna maximize the price you can sell it for. You wanna get a good person in there always paying you, but you wanna maximize the total tip-top price that you can get for this mobile home when you're selling it on payment. So let's take a 10% or less down payment, let's assume that you're selling it for 40,000, you take less than $4,000 as a down payment, which is low. Uh, three to 550 monthly is the cash flow that we're almost always going for. So that's assuming and not even an assumption, but kind of a do that. Uh, and then it needs TLC, the home that this home that is in our mind here that we're selling on payments, it's in a park, we're gonna be cash flowing this much, it needs some TLC. No structural stuff, no electrical problems, no plumbing issues, things like that. Um, and then I want you to know that because we're gonna look at a graph here. Things are coming on. All right, now with the graph behind me, the y-axis right here, I had to look that up, which one was which. Remember from school, the y-axis and the x-axis. The x-axis is the default rate. The further this way, uh, the higher the default rate on the graph, and the taller, the, this is the original, the, on the y-axis, the total original length of home payments. The further up you go, the, the, the higher in monthly payments, the longer that that goes, the higher default rate that you have, regardless of the, of the price of the home. And so I'll tell you what I mean. There's a sweet spot here, 
And the sweet spot is setting your tenant buyers up for success. This is what I've seen over 20 years of selling mobile homes on payments. And I'll tell you a quick story before I show you the good stuff right under here. For my first five years, I've mentioned this in other videos, I had 100%, I wanna say 100%, that sounds made up because it's just too perfect, but I, I wanna say 100% of people in my homes defaulted. The ones I sold on payments after one, two, three, four, a couple of years, people just bailed. They realized, and I'll tell you what they realized right over here, but what I discovered of the sweet spot, let me tell you right now. Oh. The sweet spot for a mobile home that you are selling on payments, you want to go ahead and price the, the total price of the home, if you are planning on taking a 10% down payment, you want to go ahead and price the total price of the home two times what a cash price would be. If you're selling the mobile home for $20,000 on cash, that is what it will sell for, not what you're asking. You might ask a little higher and be talked down to twenty. dollars Well, if twenty dollars is the sales cash price, you want to double it to $40,000 if you are only taking... Uh, 10% uh, or less down. If you're taking 20% down, then multiply the cash price by 1.75. And then if you're taking 50% down, we're just going to up the cash price a little bit uh, because people don't have all the money to pay you down, but we do want to increase the price from cash. So you can go ahead and up that to about 25%, maybe a little bit more. Um, if you do something higher than that, if you go, you triple the price. So it's a cash price of let's say $20,000 for the mobile home and this is a kind of a, a situation for my first five years that I unknowingly was putting my tenant buyers in and I see it happen uh, I see it happen around, around the country because I get emails from people that are in this situation and I don't want you being delusional to think yes I'm selling a $20,000 cash home for $80,000 you multiplied it four times. It was 20 cash. You sold, you can sell it for, you sold it for 80. Sold just means you got somebody to agree to pay you $80,000. But as we all know, many of us included, we've purchased things in our lifetime that we should not have purchased. Or other people, we've seen them make bad purchases of things that they really cannot afford. So it's our job as investors to set our tenant buyers up for success. We really need to pre-screen our tenant buyers. If you've watched any of my videos on selling homes on payments, which is what we do some of the times, and sometimes we're wholesaling or selling for cash, but when you're selling for payments, you wanna put in so much effort to pre-screen, 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 make sure you're getting the right person in your home that's humble, that's sincere, that has the ability to repay and is ready to buy something for five, 10 or more years. I'm editing this video right now and I want to interject with a very important statement that if you are the type of investor that wants to set people up for failure, if you're listening to this and you're saying, John, I can't wait to get these homes back. I can't wait for people to default uh, and for me to get these homes back. And you're just licking your lips that you can resell the homes every three, four, five years and keep having your people default and fail, uh, that's not what we should be aiming for and this video isn't for you. If you do wanna set people up for success, you wanna maximize your profit, you wanna keep moving forward with more and more deals, not continuing to get them back, and then you have to kind of go backwards and then redo things and resell them. And you want to keep moving forward as best you can. And you will get people defaulting. Bad things happen to good people and we get homes back and we talk to people. But again, if you're just that kind of slimy investor that wants to, to treat people poorly and wants to see them fail, um, then uh, maybe this isn't the right business for you. But if you're ethical, then please continue watching. You're thinking, well, John, so if people are going to default, which, which means the, 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 the longer in payments, the higher the default rate goes. And notice that's such a sharp curve. It's such a sharp curve because people will eventually put it together that they're overpaying for the mobile home. Let's show the rest. I think you've earned it. So here's what I've learned over 20 years when people leave early. Defaulted 
tenant buyer's mindset is that they realize that what they can buy with their money. They say, hey, I, we have to spend the next five Christmases here paying off this home. That totals, you know, all this money, which again, they should know that. But, you know, in the future, a year, two, three down the road, people get under better footing, people have more money, people have better finances, and they realize we don't want to be here for another five years paying this off. You know, as we agreed, we can go ahead and buy something else. This other opportunity opened up, or I know about this thing for sale, or my, my uncle or friend told me about this other property. And so people typically are not embarrassed, but they leave in the middle of the night. It's common, it's kind of cliche, but it absolutely happens. And you won't even know that it's, that it's vacant. Um, the tenant buyers, they, they see it as renting a lot of the times. When I see it, people just abandon the home, you know, in the minds, it's like, okay, well, that was just rent for us. Yes, we put down a couple grand, which we know we're going to lose, but, uh, you know, they just see it as renting. So it's not a big stretch of the imagination. And again, you've sold the home for such a high price. Uh, let's say you did sell it for 80 grand. Somebody agreed to pay you 80 grand for this $20,000 home. Well, that person in the home isn't going to try to, if they still owe you 60, they're not going to try to say, well, let's try to sell it to somebody for 60. No, they're going to move on with their life. They're just going to go to the next home and keep doing their job and, you know, living their life. And they're, they're just going to abandon the home. Now, the condition should be very normal, normal wear and tear, unless the people were messy or slobs, and that's a different story, or people started a bunch of demo construction and they never finished it. But that's not that common. And people will only damage the property, like put holes in it or do something malicious if they're specifically mad at you. You know, they feel like you took advantage of them, you lied to them, you wronged them. But that rarely happens because we want a good relationship with people. The appliances might be missing. So I'll say that because that, that, that may happen. Uh, now, what to do next? Well, if it's vacant, then try to contact the folks, see what's going on, see if they're okay. Obviously, they left. Um, you can have them sign some sort of hold harmless agreement, change the locks, clean the home, fix it if it needs to be fixed, and then sell it depending on how you're going to sell the home. Uh, if it's, if the person that is defaulted is still in the home, check the link below in the description of this video, because there's another video, uh, with a recorded phone call of me talking to a tenant, kind of urging them out of the home in a very ethical, friendly way, a speedy way. Uh, because that's something that we have to deal with. You know, bad things happen to good people. And the people we want to put in our home, the people we want to set up for success, we need to screen them. Bad things happen to good people, but we want people calling us, talking to us, you know, being uh, very conscious of their home and their, their credit and their background and uh, what, they, what they say they do, they're going to do, and they feel embarrassed and a little shameful and they want to call you and correct it. And... You know, to the folks listening, it's like, well, yeah, like that's common. That's common courtesy. And a lot of people that we sometimes sell to aren't thinking of us like that or don't have that common courtesy for us anyway. So it's very important to put the right person in your home. Remember, you're not renting this home. You are selling this home on payments. Even if someone wants to give you zero down, you are selling this home on payments. And that mindset between an, an, a buyer this is my home, I'm gonna fix it up, I'm gonna take care of it, this is my castle, I'm, work, I'm work, working towards this, and this is the first time in my life I've been able to do it, or since that bankruptcy or that foreclosure, you know, this is gonna be mine, and I'm ready, and I have a good job, and uh, versus someone that's just renting that is not any of what I described just now. So okay, so I'm rambling, and I hope that that really made sense. Remember, we're only selling this to one person on payments, and you want it to be the right person, so in this range here, that's a big range. Do make sure that you're selling it for that, that, that peak amount. You can sell it for over two times the cash price. If you're taking 10% down and the home's worth 20,000 cash, you can sell this home for 40,000 payments, 50,000, 60,000. There's somebody that will probably agree to say, yes, I will pay you 80 grand. And they just Maybe they say that knowingly that they're going to default or they really believe that, but you are not setting them up for success. Doubling the money, maybe a little bit more, that is when you're taking payments and taking 10% down. If you take 50% down, up the cash price some, plus you are selling the home needing TLC. So if people do a lot of work to the home, if you go back after a few months and you see, wow, there's been so much improvements, well, that person is much, much less likely to, to default 
if the prices of real estate keep shooting up and up and up and up, well then it may not be, uh, it may not make sense for people to actually move anywhere because the home that you sold them is actually still a very good deal. Uh, and we do typically want to be lower than monthly rent. We want to make it uh, convenient for people, uh, easy for people to pay the monthly payment. We want to make it substantial for us, three to five fifty, but aim to be below a local apartment rent. So if there's an, uh, a basic economic uh, economy apartment, not a luxury apartment nearby, that's a two or three bedroom. Well, if it's a two bedroom, then use the number for a two bedroom, but we want to be below that, that average market rent. Uh, depending on the bedroom sizes. I hope that that all made sense. I hope that this uh, made sense to you. If you have any questions, please comment below. Please like the video. That would help out a bunch and subscribe uh, for more mobile home investing videos. Uh, if you have any questions about investing or getting started with investing, check out the website, mobilehomeinvesting.net. Tons of free information there, as well as uh, uh, programs to move forward with and educate you even more. So I hope that that made sense. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.